Hey guys, in this video, we'll be going over all the various things that you can do to lower chronically elevated levels of the inflammatory cytokine transforming growth factor beta 1. Transforming growth factor beta 1 is an inflammatory cytokine that is produced in various immune cells like macrophages, lymphocytes, by the immune gland itself, the thymus gland, as well as via the bones and the bone marrow. And like other inflammatory cytokines, transforming growth factor beta 1 tends to be elevated in people with chronic immune and inflammatory conditions. For example, people who are exposed to a heavy amount of toxicity, whether that's from their environment, from diet, the consumption of drugs and alcohol, or people exposed to mold toxins, fungal infections, parasite infections, etc. And although the production of transforming growth factor beta 1 and other inflammatory cytokines is a helpful survival response in the case that the immune system is being overburdened or overthrown with toxicity from viruses, bacteria, or other damaging factors, when chronically produced, not only does this indicate an underlying chronic stressor, but the overproduction or the overexpression of transforming growth factor beta 1 has been found to be elevated in the balding scalp and a major contributing factor to fibrotic states because it does cause abnormal changes to tissue growth. So it can actually cause an overexpression of collagen synthesis leading to many fibrotic states, the fibrotic scalp just being one example of that. It can actually damage the vitamin D receptor, which not only further contributes to fibrosis because vitamin D plays a key regulatory role in the maintenance of collagen synthesis and normal tissue function, but vitamin D is also essential for other important factors of good health. It can increase the production of free radicals and free radical damage while simultaneously decreasing the production of antibodies ultimately suppressing the immune system. It can lead to muscle degeneration and impair muscle regeneration. And perhaps worst of all, transforming growth factor beta 1 has a feedback loop with serotonin. So as it rises, so does serotonin. And serotonin is not the feel-good neurotransmitter you've been told it is. It is actually an inflammatory mediator. So it leads to or causes inflammation and is implicated in fibrotic states, mostly through its anti-metabolic or metabolic suppressing effects. So it generally slows down the metabolic rate, which leads to decreased cellular energy production, which increases the risk for oxidative stress, inflammation, and fibrosis. So these are just a couple of primary examples of what can go wrong when this inflammatory cytokine is chronically elevated. And the reason I'm even making this video is because as I've touched on in previous videos, Transforming growth factor beta 1 is one of the major contributing factors to the fibrosis of the scalp that is seen in male pattern baldness, which is a hot topic here on our YouTube channel. And as I've broken down in those other videos, again, if you take a look at some of the roles of transforming growth factor beta 1, it does induce tissue damage and can cause localized inflammation and fibrosis. So this shows us that the slick, bald, shiny scalp that we see in male pattern baldness is the result of actual inflammation, localized scalp tissue inflammation, which can be caused primarily by elevated levels of transforming growth factor beta 1. And given the fact that this is an inflammatory substance, this helps us see that hair loss is more or less an inflammatory condition, not as much as it is a genetic condition. So with all this in mind, I wanna share with you a couple of clinically proven things that you can start doing to lower the chronic production of transforming growth factor beta one, thus having an anti-inflammatory effect on the body. So getting right to it, the number one thing I'm gonna recommend you do for lowering the chronic production of transforming growth factor beta one, especially if you're concerned about scalp fibrosis or any sort of skin tissue fibrosis, is to get daily adequate sunlight. So you wanna get direct sunlight on the skin. Of course, you don't wanna burn, but as much as you can every single day without burning is gonna actually be incredibly beneficial for lowering the production of transforming growth factor beta one. Overall inflammation is gonna be incredibly beneficial for balancing the hormones in your body to prevent any sort of inflammation. And this is something that I recommend to anybody with, again, scalp fibrosis, because there are studies that show that getting sunlight and all the various mechanisms in it can actually potentially even reverse tissue fibrosis. So again, I can't overemphasize enough the importance of getting daily sunlight 
for fibrotic conditions, for balancing the hormones, for lowering prolactin, increasing dopamine, and again, just for improving your overall health. So the second major thing I'm gonna recommend, which sort of correlates with the first point, is the activation of the vitamin D receptor. So again, the best way to do this is just to get daily sunlight. The sunlight is not only a source of vitamin D3, but it helps to activate the vitamin D receptors in your skin, which again can correct fibrosis, lower the production of inflammatory cytokines and generally improve the health and integrity of the skin tissue and your tissue overall. So again, the best way to probably do that is to get daily sunlight, but this is again just something else that's been clinically proven to lower this inflammatory cytokine. All right, so let's get into now a couple of herbs that have been clinically proven to contain substances that are anti-inflammatory that can lower the production of transforming growth factor beta-1. So at the top, we have reishi mushroom. From there, I'm gonna recommend any herbs containing apigenin, and the best are probably going to be agaricus mushroom, but other foods like orange juice and guava and celery contain apigenin. Also, herbs that contain berberine. These are herbs like coptis and turmeric, as well as goji berry. From there, ginkgo biloba has been clinically proven to suppress the production of transforming growth factor beta-1, along with the feature compound emodin, which is present in hoshu wu, and lastly, one of my favorite medicinal mushrooms, cordyceps, has been clinically proven to inhibit the production of transforming growth factor beta-1. So these are just a handful of very simple things that you can do in regards to your lifestyle and clinically proven medicinal herbs and medicinal mushrooms to lower the production of this inflammatory cytokine. Now, remember, as I mentioned earlier, the reason that this inflammatory cytokine tends to elevate in the first place is because the body is being exposed to some sort of stressor. So there's tons of different things that could be causing it to be elevated and figuring out what those are for you is going to be very essential because remember the cure is in the cause. So as helpful as these transforming growth factor beta one inhibitors are going to be, you're going to still want to find that cause for the elevation in the first place. Now, just some things to consider. Transforming growth factor beta-1 has been found to be elevated in cases of mold toxicity. So you're definitely gonna wanna take a look around your environment and even at your diet for any cases of mold toxicity and take proactive steps to eliminate that. There's tons of resources on the internet that can help you figure this stuff out. I might even make a video in the future about this topic. And other than that, all your typical inflammatory substances, toxic substances, and typical stressors that might induce a stress response or evoke an immune response in the body might raise this substance as well. So definitely be sure to reference our other videos on inflammation and on autoimmunity to get some ideas there. Anyways, that brings this video to a close. So for those of you that have been curious about how to reverse scalp fibrosis, remember this is one of the key players in all sorts of tissue fibrosis. So figuring out how to lower it and regulate this substance is gonna be key and very therapeutic. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos. And if you're interested in supplementing with any of the herbs I recommended throughout this video, you can find all of those along with our blog and our online wellness academy in the description box below.